the sun still never sets on the British Empire. The passing of Queen Elizabeth gives us time to think about some of those smaller pieces of the empire that still exist. Take, for instance, tiny Pitcairn Island. It was bounty mutineers that settled at Pitcairn, and it's their descendants who largely make up the 50 residents of the British colonial possession at Pitcairn down to the present. When Queen Elizabeth died, the bounty bell that's still situated at, at Adamstown, the only village on Pitcairn, was rung 96 times, one toll for each year of Her Majesty's life. A book was brought out, a book of remembrance that was signed by all of the residents of the island. The first resident to sign it was my friend Royal Warren, 94 years old. Royal, that's his first name. It's a common first name on the island, and it's an odd first name, I think we would all agree, for a group of people whose ancestors were mutineers from the British Navy. The irony of a group of loyal mutineers is, I think, something worth noting in our supposedly post-colonial world. We can continue to debate the cultural legacies of empire and cultural imperialism throughout the world, but we miss the fact that empire is persistent if we overlook the tiny places like Pitcairn. There, the past isn't really the past, the empire isn't really over, and mutineers aren't really mutineers. They continue down to the present to be loyal colonial subjects, loyal to the crown, and now loyal to their new king, Charles III.